All right, so today is Monday, October 7th. We're in Everett, Massachusetts, and we're gonna look at some backyard vines. Um, wine grapes want 165 days of at least 65 degrees or higher in order to ripen properly. And that's been happening in the last three or four years here, even in Everett, Mass. So this grape, you can see, this is what in Italian we call, well, I call it la seconda portata which I guess means like the second coming. Um, I didn't prune these grapes well enough. So this is the second coming of the grapes. They're not gonna ripen, but just to see them, I've already picked these grapes. This is the golden musket. This Golden Musket is a hybrid. It's um, a combination of Vitas Vinifera and Vitas Lambrusca. Vitas Vinifera is from the old country. Vitas Lambrusca is native to the United States. When the Vikings came here, what did they call the USA? Vinland, because the place was full of vines. So what I've learned over the years is I spaced the vines about two and a half feet. When I first did this, the space was about four inches. I read all the books and that's what the book suggested. But what I've learned is that having a, a wider space allows more sun and more wind to get in here and the grapes don't get diseased. So then I don't have to spray them. Uh, when I first started this video, back in 2000, I planted Cabernet Franc and Merlot. But every, and and the, the aisles were four inches. But unfortunately, they all got diseased. The grapes... ...look great. But then they got diseased with something that's called black rot. It's the worst grape disease east of the Rockies. It's like a fungus or a mold. Uh, so I experimented until I found varieties that get disease and that's what we have now so this is a the vine we looked at before is a golden musket this one over here is also a golden musket and this vine over here comes from a friend I really don't know what kind it is but I think it's a um, some kind of here from Malvasia um, in the springtime when you prune these okay, can cut off a stem like this and plant it and it will come back or you do about 10 of them and five of them will come back so my name is Alessandro Massaro um, we're going to continue with this tour the cameraman is Ilya a good friend of mine and if you take a look at the third floor up there um, the story be behind this vineyard is my dad came here from Italy in uh, 1955 he rented that third floor apartment um, the owners of the home fell in love with him, he fell in love with them, and they promised to sell the house to him as long as he would let them die in this home, which he did. Then in 1956, my dad was established. He called for his wife and his two children, my mom, my brother, and me. And We came in 1956. Dad died in 1996, and my mom was real healthy at that time, and she said that uh, instead of having this whole backyard full of tomatoes, to put in some vines, and that's what we did. Because in addition to the grapes, we also have some fig trees. Come on, Ilya, follow me. birds and the squirrels are really upset right now because I net everything um, and here are some things here ah here's the right one there's a right one right here so uh, these things are kind of really funny can you see the ones on that yeah. those look like they're not going to get ripe right but if we get some sunshine in the next few days they're going to plump up just like this and you can split them in half 
and they are so freaking delicious. Mm. So these are white. Come on down this way. The fish on this tree are purple. It's also ready to be picked. You're not supposed to touch them with your finger, but I figure if you can't feel if they're ripe or not, how do you know they're ripe? So I touch them a little bit. They haven't hurt them. I'll pick these a little bit later. The fig trees need to be protected. The winter will freeze them. So you can bend them down, cover them with construction blankets. There are many ways to do it. You can dig them under the ground, but they have to be protected or the winter will kill them all. So let's go back to the grapes. So if you buy a bottle of wine, most of the time it's 12% alcohol or higher. If you're going to make your own wine, you also want to end up with a 12% alcohol. And there's a two to one rule. So when you pick the grapes and crush them, you can measure the sugar. If it's uh, let's say 22% alcohol, 22% uh, sugar, it's going to give you, when all the sugar ferments out, it's going to be 11% alcohol. These grapes, the last three or four years, have come in at about anywhere from 10 to 11.5% percent alcohol so I have to add a little bit of sugar to bring them up to 12 but the total acidity on these grapes is awesome it's above 0.6 and that's what you want for a grape so when it ferments it's nice and healthy yeah so here's a bunch of grapes that were hanging low. So even though the nets were all above and below and tied and whatnot, squirrels and birds still can make their way in there. And they're like surgeons. And I'm convinced that the squirrels and the birds that are able to get in here must have been former winemakers in a previous life. And they, they really know how to identify the ripe grapes. They don't eat all of them. They leave, you can see what they leave behind. They only take the ones that are really sweet and ripe. Um, it's almost impossible to keep them out. But you have to put the nets up, otherwise the grapes will never get to 10, 11 uh, percent alcohol. So I want to go back to my dad for a minute. You know, when he, when he lived on the third floor there, and my dad was an interesting guy because he had you know, when he was 18 years old, he worked in Libya. Um, then he served during the Second World War, you know, in the Italian army, and he was in Eritrea, he was in Ethiopia, he was a prisoner of war for five years in India. He came back to Italy, went to work in Venezuela. But when he came to this country, this is, he said, this is the country for me and my family. So he stayed here for a couple of years, got himself a little established, and then called for his wife and his two children, me and my brother, to come here. Uh, he converted the second floor of this house into an apartment. We all moved here, uh, the best country in the world, and this is where we stayed. And when my mom wanted to put a vineyard in the backyard, I thought that would be a good thing to do. So the, the, books, the books I've read about growing wine grapes in your backyard uh, recommend using a 4x4 posts like this and running them along the aisle, stapling some wire along the edge and then trailing, you know, trail, getting the vine to grow in, inside there. Um, but from my experience, it's too tight. So the wind can't get in there as, as well as it can with a two, inch, a two foot spacing and the sun can't get in there because that black rod is, like I said before, a mold. And um, when it's tight like that, that mold can develop ease more, more easily. And when it's wide like this, it can't. So I'm convinced that the two foot spacing is much better than a four by four. That should do, All right, the, the cameraman has a good eye. He found uh, some more bunches of grapes here, what I called before La Segunda Portada. Uh, these are not gonna ripen, but a, a grapevine is like many other vines. Um, they produce not only their primary fruit, but if you don't prune them,
properly, they're going to produce a second fruit. And that's what this is, the second fruit. Um, these are not going to ripen. We just don't have a hot enough hot days. Like I said, today's October 7th, and they're not going to ripen um, because I just I didn't prune them carefully enough. This year, I didn't spend as much time in this vineyard as I used.